Hey guys, Dwayne from Fire Bros Garage. Um, Matt's here. He's the camera and lighting specialist today. <laughs> uh, we've been talking about this 64 for a long time. You've seen some videos on it here and there. Uh, we're going to kind of all piece it together and make the story for you and the history behind this 64. I met my wife in 92 and shortly after that uh, we went to Albuquerque, New Mexico to see some of her family. Um, this car sat in a barn. It belonged to Daryl, um, who had it when he was in high school. Him and his dad kind of worked on it together. He had it in high school. Originally, it was maroon with a black top, um, but the color before that was yellow. And in some of the pictures that you'll see um, when this is going through some body work phases, you'll see the original color. But uh, they owned it. It sat. Daryl went on to um germany to work there for a long time he's still there actually and the car sat it sat for a long time he'd always had hopes on trying to get it done maybe doing a project with his son um, and just because the car was here in the states and they were living in germany where they're still at now it wasn't something that was going to happen but they didn't want to get rid of the car they had crazy offers on this car because it is an original 64 ss convertible um, but the the problem was is they just the time issue with you know how that goes but i met my wife like i said you know in the mid 90s and or early 90s and we went there and this car was sitting in the barn then and it was backed into an open face barn and the top was down it had some bicycles and stuff in it some wood that had come down and slid you know slid it because slid to the side of it because this was a a farm at one time and uh where it was at so all that being said you know over the years we had talked he wanted me to restore it for him um we could never agree on a, a price because it's always hard to just give somebody a price on what it's going to cost to restore a car um but you know 20 plus years goes by and this car is still sitting there at the bed and breakfast there that I told you about. And they, Daryl finally is like, man, I want to see it done. I, I would much rather see it done than just sitting there rotting. So he sold it to me with the stipulation that it would stay in the family. And so it's definitely staying in the family. Um, but you'll see some pictures throughout this of what it looked like when it was sitting in the barn when we got it here and how my buddy Dean and Matt got me got it running. It sat for 28 years prior to the time that it actually fired up again for the first time. And it had that uh, 283 with the power pack heads on it and the power glide in it. And um, some parts have been changed off of that old school block. And so it wasn't original as far as the motor goes. It wasn't as original as far as the paint goes um and some other things uh that took away from it. we do have the block which is good that's date coded for this and so you'll kind of see the history of there's still pictures but you'll see the history on it okay so we'll kind of start at the ground and work our way up um, these are foos wheels uh, the wheels are uh, and wrapped with bfg tires these are a 225 45 17 tire in the front and the backs are a 245 45 17 in the back um, they fit just right after manipulating all the stuff we talked about or we will be talking about in uh, the videos um, and what we went through to get the the front tires underneath this but the backs fit perfect as far as back spacing as far as fitting up into the wheel wells all that it set really nice um, like I said, this car originally came from the factory yellow. It's that pale yellow, but, and it was all solid with a black top, black interior. Um, it was original, then it was painted sometime after that, uh, a dark maroon color with a black interior, black top. Um, most of the chrome, when we got it out of there, there was a lot of good pieces of chrome, but the key pieces that we needed, um, were dented. So we chose to go with aftermarket stuff that took some 
manipulating to get these to fit right. If anybody's ever done aftermarket chrome, you know that they don't always fit perfect and not two people make the same bend in the same spot, you know, so you're trying to, to get things to fit. But we were able to keep the uh, uh, window chrome, the A-pillar chrome, the um, wind wing stuff. But, you know, as far as emblems, things like that, they were really pitted, uh, worn out, so we had to replace emblems. Um, there was minor body damage and a little bit of pit rusting in some spots that we took care of above the wheel wells on both sides. Some minor dents in the fenders and stuff, parking lot rash, that kind of stuff. But all in all, the car was in really good shape as far as the body. Um, you would think a car that had sat that long with dirt sitting in all the normal rust areas for GM, they, it, it, it's pretty dry climate in Albuquerque, so therefore... There wasn't a whole lot of rust issues. Uh, all right, guys, we're just going to kind of blaze through the front of this. Uh, we replaced most of the, or all the chrome in the front and the bumper. The bumper had some dents in it. You know, like I said, you know, it looked like somebody used it as a, a feeler. Once you hit something, it, you knew you were close enough. The corners had a couple of dents here and on this side as well. Um, the, cr the grill had some pieces that were bent and broken. One was broken over here. The other side had some bend spots. We replaced the headlights. Uh, they're the new style headlights. Uh, they're pretty nice. I like them. I'll give you a show here real quick. Nice. So um, center of the hood's been, uh, the chrome strip there has been uh, replaced. I do have a lot of this chrome. So if somebody's um, wanting it, Holler at me, maybe I can get it to you if you know how to repair it. Uh, the hood had some dents in it, just some minor stuff. Um, but as far as the front goes, a lot of that stuff was replaced just because of damage and um, it was just easier to fix it and less time to, to, to put new, new stuff on it. Uh, the inner bumper filler, that was perfect. Didn't have any issues with it at all whatsoever. I'll go over some of the, the engine on this. It is a date coded 64, but it came uh, engine and block and heads, but it came out of a uh, 64 Corvette. It's got the no accessory hole fuely heads on it. Um, and because we ran the no accessory holes and the fuely heads with this 327, and it is a stock 327, we found a block that was able to be honed and not bored. And I found some uh, original GM dome pistons and there. This thing's got probably 11 to one compression in it right now. And, uh, you know, we re rung or got new rings and, you know, sent the rods and, and uh, crank and everything out to get balanced. So it's a stock 327, but it's the Fuley head 327. Um, so got the Edelbrock uh, performer. Uh, the new style performer RPM, the air gap on it. And uh, because this had no accessory holes, uh, you can't mount anything to, anything to the heads. So the front serpentine set on this is an Eddy Motorsports, uh, the polished or not polished, but the uh, silver or aluminum uh, serpentine kit from Eddy Motorsports. And because this is a convertible, we decided not to run an air conditioning unit. So... <laughs> Um, but it does have the provisions here for an AC compressor. It would remove this pulley. You set your compressor in with the pulley on it and the wiring's there for the car and everything else. If you wanted to run AC on it, you could. Um, it's a single wire, single wire alternator. Um, we did run, um, you know, the Dakota digital gauges. So some of this stuff that you see is Dakota Digital and some of the stuff you see under the hood is from the Holly Sniper system that's on here. But up here in the front, it's a cold case radiator with dual fans. Um, seems to work awesome. We did get a uh, an aftermarket uh, re reservoir for it because it does need a reservoir, especially because of this. When you get to temperature or when the temperatures cycle back and forth, you don't want it puking out onto the ground, especially if you park it at a car show. Last thing you need is antifreeze dropping out on the ground. Um, but getting back to uh, the ignition system in this, this is a complete Holly sniper system on it. Uh, it's the HyperSpark 
uh, you know, coil and uh, um, box, ignition box on it. Uh, the distributor, Holly distributor that's in it. And I tell you what, this Holly EFI system on this was pretty much plug and play. Uh, a lot of the issues that I had with it were because of my own ignorance. And if you do a complete Holly sniper system on something, I would highly, highly suggest one, read the instructions <laughs> and two, watch the videos. Uh, there's a ton of uh, Holly uh, YouTube videos that they put out for this and you'll pick up way more than what's in the instructions and I'm a visual kind of guy so when they show you how they're how to do it it seems to click a little bit more for me so um, but that's the uh, power brake booster and stuff that was part of the CPP kit uh, we did do a whole 64 uh, wiring harness um, through this whole car from American Auto Wire. So there's a few extra wires and relays and things like that just to kind of cover the basis so that you're not burning things up and shorting things out. So between the Holly sniper system, the provisions that American Auto Wire gives you, and then also running the Dakota Digital, you know, it's, it's not hard to do, but it does take a little bit of figuring. And, you know, um, if you have just a little bit of wiring experience it's not hard to do at all you know that the red wire gives you 12 volts and the black wire is a ground it's pretty pretty easy so um, we did run a full roller uh, um, Howard's cam with roller rockers roller lifters um, it is a hydro hydraulic roller cam in it um, so one of the things we did in, like I said trial by error we had the original shocks and springs in this and even with moving that wheel in with that different spindle you know you can ob obviously change some stuff by getting a different offset wheel um, we had already bought the wheels so the offset was basically going to be either <laughs> figure out the geometry in here or you buy a new set of wheels maybe that would have been easier but these were already mounted you can't return them so one of the things we did to remedy the the height and just being able to adjust the height and not munch the inner wheel well like we did even after all that it did the outside of this tire did grab the very edge of the lip of the wheel well and bent it down so because the car sat too low so we bumped it up just a little bit and the way we fixed that was we did some uh, QA1 coilovers uh, single adjustment but uh, we did some coilovers and adjusted the height enough so that when my girth was in the vehicle, it didn't uh, tear up the inner wheel well on the thing. So we got that all fixed, dialed in, um, no issues now at this time, and it sits and, and it sits and rides really nice. So QA1 coilovers with the single adjustment on the bottom, and that helped us with a lot of that. So moving on what we're going to talk about is we uh we bought this mallet on pan it's a different pan it's an extra quart and a half of oil and if you saw our other videos we had a massive leak on this thing engine oil leak and we couldn't figure it out we couldn't because this is a 64 corvette block that's in it that had the old canister style oil filter on it um, we did the uh, upgrade to where you could do a spin on it's an adapter that comes on here. I think Transdap makes that adapter so that you can put a uh, spin on oil filter on. But I could not figure out for the life of me where this oil, engine oil leak was coming from. And then like I referenced that other video, we did an engine oil dye and it showed us exactly where that leak was coming from. It was a plug at the top of the, the block that was in, underneath the head. So we had to pull off the driver's side head to pull that plug, reseal it and put it back on. Um, but we do, we did do a full video on it. And if you ever, uh, do a motor, one of these old school motors again, um, be sure you reseal that never had to do one on any of the other motors, but for whatever <laughs> reason, this one leaked and caused us a major headache trying to find that oil leak. Okay, so like I was saying, we're moving back. Um, you can obviously see that we do have the spin on filter. Um, we put a TC, so when we originally started building this, we put a 200R, we built one, 
that one leaked. Um, this was a tranny nightmare for this car. We started out with one that we rebuilt ourselves, uh, or had a buddy rebuilt it, and it leaked, leaked out of the front of the pump. So this car has never been put together just one time and been happy with not having oil leaks. So um, we pulled it out, fixed it, put it back in, it leaked again. So um, we fixed that, we took it to a place down in the valley to do some dyno testing on it and that 200 r um that was in there ended up burning up on the engine or on the chassis dyno but we did get uh on the chassis dyno with a burned up slip and tranny 299 uh horsepower to the rear wheels so with a slip and tranny burned up smoking that na smelled nasty uh 299 horsepower to the rear wheels is not bad for a giant mistake. <laughs> so um, pulled it out again, and I just went with a complete TCI from Jegs, and um, it was it was bomb. That was the way to go. We did a complete rebuild or a, a completed new rebuild from TCI with the TCI converter, all the oil, dipstick tube, all that stuff. Um, one shot deal, stuck it in and it works flawlessly. Adjusted the TV cable on it, goes through all the gears, upshifts, downshifts like it's supposed to. It's pretty nice. And it'd be interesting to see now what kind of horsepower goes to the rear wheels because um, this, you know, doesn't slip at all and it'll annihilate the tires with uh, no problem at all, especially with this 327 in it. But, um, we did have to modify some of the uh, tranny mounts. This is a uh, tranny mount for a Chevelle from, uh, sorry. So we did have to change the transmission mount on this, um, cross member, all that stuff across here. Uh, with the 200, you can see we had to put some brackets in. I wasn't ready to cut those out again. Just I didn't want to be messing with the frame a lot more, but <laughs> we did use uh, this cross member here. Worked perfect. It's from G-Force. It obviously has the cutouts in it for your exhaust, for higher exhaust, so that you can lower the car. Um, G-Force had this thing lined out pretty nice. It bolted right in, no issues. Um, it came with the transmission mount for this tranny, and. If you look underneath this car, I think the exhaust is the lowest thing there is on this. And uh, um, I'd rather tear up some exhaust, if that be the case, than a transmission pan. So, But it's a bomber cross member. It's heavy. So uh, if you use them, just be beware that that box, when it comes to your front door, is going to be pretty heavy. Probably torn open and the bolts hanging out of the side like this one was. <laughs> Moving to the back. So this has the Hooker Super Comp headers. They're just black painted headers um, that comes back and it's bolted into this uh, MagnaFlow kit. They did a really good job on this X-Pipe kit. It's a two and a half inch cross pipe or X-Pipe. Um, you know, it sounds, this car sounds awesome. I love the sound of this car. It almost has the sound of like a um, newer style Corvette. It's crazy because it's an old school motor. This, this exhaust system flows really nice. It has uh, these clamps. They're all bolt together clamps. Some guys might want to um, TIG weld this stuff all together once it's in place. I'm not good with TIG welding. That's one of the things I've never been able to master. It's too much of the foot pedal and hands and coordination and I'm not coordinated. So, but this kit, worked awesome in this this car I ordered it specific and it came the way it is and um if i can get matt eventually to move the camera around i did weld the loop on this side because the emergency brake cable the way it sat in this car i didn't want it rubbing the uh or getting tangled up in this drive shaft so i welded a small little uh, hoop on this side that keeps the emergency brake cable down and keeps it away from 
uh, one, it keeps one side away from the exhaust, but the other keeps it away from the, the drive line on this. Didn't want it wadding it up. But um, it does, it has these real nice uh, stainless uh, exhaust uh, mufflers on here. And obviously you can see the magna flow on it, but it goes up and over the, the diff and you can, this kit allows you, they give you some extra pieces. It allows you to manipulate how you want it to either go up and over the differential or straight out the back. But I went up and over and brought it out, brought it out behind the rear wheels on both sides. So now that we've got situated and we're facing back towards the front, obviously this is a rear differential cover. We put a Mosier, aluminum Mosier differential cover on it with using that uh, Richmond ratcheting style rear uh, differential. I chose to put this in it. This Mosier uh, engineering rear differential cover has two bolts that come down and sit right on top of the, the caps. It's anything, any kind of flexing, any kind of movement out of the picture. It's kind of nice. It doesn't, you know, they don't require a lot of torque. It's very little, you know, you just put a little bit of pressure on it, set your jam nuts and call it good. Um, but I have this same cover on uh, the C10. I have it on my 70 Chevelle. My wife's got it on her 52 uh, five window pickup. That'll be another video coming up uh, before too long, hopefully. Um, but moving on under here, we did just get the stock uh, coil springs for this. Um, they weren't drop springs or anything else because this car came originally equipped with air shocks in the back. Um, the fillers there. We chose to use the air shocks again because you can adjust the ride height if you throw some uh, small guys in there like Matt and I in the back seat you can adjust the height. Um, you don't rub the wheel wells. <laughs> so um, uh, having air shocks in the back seems to be the ticket for this car. Uh, I like them. Um, and like I said, you take it to a show, you know, you can drop them way down, make it look better. You know, you just need to air them back up is the only problem. Um, so like I said, that, uh, exhaust was really nice. Mandrel bent up over the, uh, rear differential comes out. And like I said, we dumped them out behind the wheels. Um, so this does have the slotted and drear, dreared, slotted and drilled rear brakes. And uh, I think these are like the cal uh, Cadillac, like 80s Cadillac calipers, front calipers off of an 80 uh, Cadillac, but it's all part of that CPP kit. Um, it's nice, it comes with all the part numbers in case you needed to buy new brake pads, you know, you know what you're ordering them for. Uh, the fuel tank is from Tanks, and it is an in-tank fuel pump because we are running the Holley, um fuel injection system on this. Uh, we'll go over that here in a little bit, but uh, real nice in-tank fuel pump. It's, you don't have to run a return line because it returns inside the tank from any kind of pressure that's not used. And normally where you would run a return line, this uh, fuel pump system that's in this tank will return inside the tank. If it senses unused pressure or excessive pressure and it just dumps it back into the tank internally. So that's kind of nice. Um, it does have a sending unit because all the gauges uh, inside are D Dakota digital gauges. They're the RTX style, I think it is. Um, and so when we ordered that, we told them that we were using Dakota digital gauges and they sent us the sending unit and float level and stuff for that gauge set. So. Um, oh, correction, UMI performance is the sway bar, sorry. The upper and lower control arms are uh, uh, CPP, the sway bar is UMI performance. And it fit perfect with the CPP stuff, no issues whatsoever. And I think you can also get these kits complete with upper and lower tubular, UMI makes it, you know, if you just wanted to buy the complete kit from them, uh, you could go that way. All right, so some of these chrome emblems like this one we're missing. Um, some of the strips along here were just dented up really bad, so we got we had to replace those. Um, this is called for snake. 
is what it was called, copper snake metallic. I, this is the desert sand metallic on top, and they're both PPG colors, but I had to match the top to the flake that was in the orange, and if we can get it outside and show it to you. Key to me on matching two different colors if you have metallic is to match the flake size. A lot of times people will like this color and like this color and there might be two different metallics but one size metallic in there is real heavy and the other is real light and it just kind of throws it off in my mind so that's something to just kind of keep in uh keep in your mind if you're going to do a two color car that's a metallic so uh, we replaced pretty much everything back here as well as far as chrome stripping goes this centerpiece the only thing that is original to this car was these buckets that actually hold and house your lights, your reverse light, your brake light, and your, brink, your blinker. And the reason for that is this bucket piece that's here is not made aftermarket. So if you're somebody that's making aftermarket parts for 64, 65, well, 65 is a different tail light. I don't know what the call is for it, but this part right here on both sides, upper and lower, is not made by uh, re remanufactured stuff. Bumper's been replaced. Um, there was some dents and things in the trunk or in the trunk lid. But, but let's see. Oh, yep. There's the rest of the stereo stuff. Sorry. But you can see speckle painted, clean this whole thing out. Speckle painted the trunk the original color. And, you know, ended up, did not have a uh, trunk light, but I did add the trunk light because there are provisions in the American Auto Wire. Uh, uh, set up to do a trunk light for this if you want to do that and so we did it uh, we did soft seal uh, uh, weather stripping all the way around it man the weather stripping went in this nice soft seal is the way to go I love that stuff it fits it's not such a pain in the butt you can't get the stuff in I know I went through three different kinds of seals for my dad's 67 so that when you closed it you didn't have to jump up in the air and throw a small child on the top of the hood so that it would close because that stuff was too tall. But as you can see, it closes really nice. So we're gonna talk about the top and some of the interior on this car. Uh, a friend of mine, Garrett Bateman, uh, he did a phenomenal job um, doing interior and stuff on this car. In my mind, he did a great job. This was the first uh, convertible top he's ever done. The material came from a place in California. We'll reference that um, and put the name up there. They have a bunch of different colors, but this is more of a canvas top. It's not the, <clears throat> the vinyl top convertible style that was originally on the car. Original uh, vinyl top on the car had a plastic back window. This one has a glass back window in it. So it unzips, you drop it down into the boot area or the top area, and then you undo the, the fronts here and you can lift the whole top up and, and set it into the back. Um, this car did come with actually a convertible top boot that covers it all up. It was red, it was stuffed in the trunk and um, I've had several people look at them and see if they can reduplicate that to kind of match this roof. And man, that is some long dollar to have somebody do that. So, um, but Garrett did a phenomenal job on this. He, the, we peeled everything off. He sanded and sprayed the uh, frame and everything on it. We replaced a couple of bushings, put new tack strip in these. And uh, he worked for days trying to get this to where he thought it was uh, suitable. Um, he's a perfectionist. So uh, Garrett did some side work now, but he's working down in Phoenix. Um, I'm still trying to talk him into doing some interior work for me on my car and my wife's truck. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but this top, Garrett did an awesome job on it. So. so hit the gauges real quick on this. Um, they're Dakota Digital. They're the RTX style gauge um, for the 64. And it came with the gauges and that whole uh, dash face plate that you see there. Uh, what's nice about these gauges is they come with all their own sending units. They come programmable to just about any style car, transmission, engine, whatever it is that you need 
They come pretty user friendly as far as that goes. Um, they have a phone app that once you get them hooked up, you can download this phone app, put it on your phone, and you can adjust the gauges on your phone and watch them in real time on the, on the dash uh, adjust themselves. The only thing I haven't done yet because we keep getting snow here in Flagstaff is take this out and calibrate the uh, speedometer. And that's why you see the little red box up there that says, please calibrate speed. So once I get it out, and do that, I might have to wait till we deliver it for some good weather and get a measured mile marker in there and get the speedometer set. So uh, we went away from the original steering wheel. It was so big. Um, like I said, I was setting this car up originally for me <clears throat> and I'm very slim. So I got a smaller steering wheel. Um, I even bought a tilt column uh, to put in this at one point. I still have it. And if anybody needs a 64 steering wheel column uh, that's tilt, let me know. <laughs> I'll sell it to you. Half the price. But anyway, we matched the carpet and did that kind of stuff. Uh, I put the carpet in it, but, but getting back to Garrett, Garrett did the door panels. Um, you know, he recovered. So we bought the pieces as like from OPG and they came black. The dash pad, the armrest pads, they all came black. Garrett uh, used the same vinyl as the seats and was able to cover uh, the seats and the door panels and covered the dash pad and the door hand or the um, the handle tops and even in the back seat on both sides he covered those in the original or in this vinyl that we bought um, so um, getting back to some of the um, detailing in the seats uh, Garrett did the seats he actually used the old seat cover and went off of the old seat cover I wanted to keep some of the original styling um, and the way it was and we but I wanted to do two two-tone so we did the the lighter color down the centers and he took the dark color here he matched the thread uh, for the stitching down the centers of the seats so the back seat front seats all match um, he did the stitching down the door panels the same way and then uh, we found these billet window cranks and door handles to kind of match the theme of the car. We got those from uh, Summit Racing. Um, they, they are like a five piece uh, assembly, but once, you know, it's not hard to figure out once they're on there, they're nice, they don't move around and uh, they're, they're pretty quality aluminum and easy to clean up. So, um, so the stereo in it is uh, original style looking but it's a uh, custom audio sound stereo it's got the Bluetooth interface you can answer your phone through it if you want um, you can plug in your because one of the cords down there um, on the console is a uh, um, an adapter for your phone so you can either Bluetooth music or plug in your phone and play some music, but you can also get a phone call uh, through this stereo and then know that it works because my wife called me while I was trying to install it. Um, it comes with a microphone that you can hide somewhere if you want, but um, other than that, I mean, everything works. Everything else works original. I did add a knob that's to the right of the, um, it's in between the, the cigarette lighter and the Chevrolet emblem. It's a billet knob that's a dash light dimmer because these lights are uh, LED. It has to have a, if you want to dim the lights, you need to um, buy that from uh, Dakota Digital and you can dim the dash lights if you want. If you enjoyed this video, that's kind of the history behind this car. Um, it's staying in the family and like we promised, it's been a, a labor of love. I've really enjoyed this car. Um, it's going to my brother-in-law though. So you know how that works. So Lynn, if you're watching this, you have to take care of this car. Okay. So um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. You get learned something from it. Um, you can take some uh, knowledge nuggets from it. And uh, if you haven't, Please like and subscribe, and Matt and I will continue to keep pushing these out.
I'm <laughs> gonna <laughs>